by the way Glenn Miller played. Those were the days, remembering one of television's funniest, most controversial programs with the stars of All in the Family, Classic TV. I'm Jane Pauley, and this is Time and Again. The following program is brought to you in living color. The Final Frontier. Hey, what's happening, Norm? Give me your attention, all personnel. All right, Newman. Mr. Well, you made it, Beaver, you made it. Hello, Newman. Guess I did a good job, huh, Paul? You are a meathead. I am a meathead. Baby, you're the great. And welcome to Time In Again. Think of All in the Family and you think of the 70s. It was one of that decade's dominant TV shows, a groundbreaking, hilarious, unblinking look at real life prejudice and bigotry. But All in the Family was born in the 60s, based on a British sitcom called Till Death Do Us Part, and first developed by veteran TV producer Norman Lear in 1968. The show reflected all the divisions of its time between liberals and conservatives, blacks and whites, men and women, parents and children. It exposed all those tensions and helped diffuse them through laughter. The family in question, the bunkers of 704 Hauser Street in Astoria, Queens. Working class bigot Archie and his dim-witted but good-hearted wife Edith, their semi-liberated daughter Gloria and her bleeding heart liberal husband Mike Stivick, better known as Beathead. But the show's broader subject was always the American family. It was us up there on the screen, or at least people we knew. On this episode of Time and Again, we'll hear from the stars of All in the Family, including well, Carol O'Connor, Gene Stapleton, issue. Rob Reiner, B. Arthur, Sherman Hemsley, and show creator Norman Lear. Life the way Aiden, Aiden, caught, caught, caught. Jeez, I feel like I've been gunned down. <laughs> What the hell is this? The singing dingbats? I liked, uh, enjoyed playing Archie. I enjoyed it em em enormously. I I've never had so much fun in my life for those uh, dozen or so years. And, and the laughs on the set and uh, putting it all together. And uh, sure, and I, uh, I got a, a big kick out of uh, how much the, the, the audiences liked him. The audience did like him, and, and that came to some as a surprise because when the show first came on the air, um, what's the old saying? It couldn't get arrested. I mean, yeah. the critics hated it. They Everybody did. Well, seemed to hate it. Yeah, except well, the audience. Most of, most of the critics, uh, most of the big critics uh, hated it. The audiences liked, I don't know whether you'd say they liked him. A lot of them did like, genuinely liked Archie. What they liked about Archie was that they all knew him. They all knew him. And uh, it didn't matter what level of life in America or what kind of life or what ethnic group uh, you came from, you knew uh, Archie Bunker, which... Uh, uh, you, you can't really say, I don't mean this in a denigrating way, but uh, you can't really say that about uh, uh, most uh, of the other c comedy characters. Cool. You don't really know those uh, people. Well, of course, they're not structured for that. They're structured, and it's another kind of comedy. You are, um, people who, who don't know you would perhaps find you an unlikely character to have ever been Archie Bunker. Um, you come from a family that is the complete opposite of Archie. What did you draw on to, to make the character? Well, that's a question, uh, really, that applies to uh, almost uh, every actor. You know, we're all uh, asked to play things that we don't have much experience of, you know? How do you play a king, for example, if you're asked to play Richard II or something like that? What do you do? Never been a king. You, you've got to use your imagination. Of course, with Archie, I, uh, Archie is a New Yorker, and I grew up in this city, and I heard a lot of Archies, and uh, I was able to uh, get his, his superficial character. I knew that pretty well. Uh, the, underlying, the underlying character, of course, came from a collaboration between writers and myself, and... Uh, Anyway, you know, you don't have to uh, you don't have to draw a character to perfection in in, in our business. You you uh, what you do is you work on elements that uh, that give a, an illusion and a, a, a true impression. So, where did the characterization of Bunker come from? Was it on the page, or was it you, or a combination of the two? Yeah, it was a combination of the two. Um, I knew how he uh, I knew how he sounded, 
and I, uh, I just known this uh, kind of a guy, not on a, not in a personal way, but it, it, it just I observed him and uh, imitated him. I imitated him, and then I, I got a lot of help from. Uh, they didn't know I was getting help from them at the time, but uh, I got a lot of help from Jackie Gleason and Jimmy Cagney and uh, and uh, Wallace Beery, who was by then gone. But I mean, I just uh, shamelessly imitated those guys. Because as stupid as he may have been in his positions, as wrong-headed, he did swagger. He had oh, a swagger and yeah, an assuredness. Yeah. Oh about yes, it. yes. Oh, I I I t took a lot of what I saw Jackie doing on his old. Uh, a show, uh, and of course, I, I, I was—I uh, I knew it wouldn't come out like Jackie, because I might take something of his, but comes out of me some other ways. Like a singer, uh, you could try to imitate the Sinatra all you want, but it come out of you, mm -hmm. you. Sure. Well, that's it. You can imitate the style, and the same thing uh, with uh, my my old friend now gone, uh, Jimmy Cagney. You know. Right now, you know the way Cagney used to talk. I had a way of talking. And uh, you know, you get that 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 Archie got that too. See, I got the voice more from Cagney than from uh, than from Jackie. Mrs. J, you must know how I feel about Lionel. I mean, I like him very much. You know, I practically watched the kid grow up. Archie, <laughs> you've only known Lionel four years. But them were four very important years, Edith. Them were the four years when a boy is coming into his puberty <laughs> Gene Stapleton, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Let's talk first about, about Edith, whom we don't get to see enough of these days. Good One of the morning. best women characters on television is almost gone. Do you think we can afford to lose her? <laughs> well, uh, a good morning. I, I really don't think she's lost because there is so much of our reruns and syndication. It's uh, practically a... A uh, blast, you know. <laughs> She's on mornings and early evenings, and then, of course, a few on Sunday nights. So she's not exactly gone off the waves. <laughs> Who do you think has more in common with the typical American woman, Edith or Jean? Well, of course, I can only identify with the real person uh, who is me, Jean. Um, Edith, of course, is a figment of uh, many people's imaginations and of the country's. But I don't think about that too much because we can't think about anything but ourselves primarily. That's where we start from. So when I leave the studio, I forget Edith. However, Edith Bunker uh, has been so loved and has had so much affection that she's, uh, she seems to be quite alive in many people's minds and I bask in that affection. Uh, she also has proven to be a, uh, an image uh, for many homemakers, which, um, is a source of uh, pride to me uh, because uh, she has been a bridge for me to speak and to um, uh, support the um, uh, women's movement. Jean Stapleton with me on Today in 1979. By then, after nine seasons, All in the Family had become Archie Bunker's place. Mike and Gloria had moved away, and Edith was seen only occasionally as the action focused on Archie's bar. The following year, with Stapleton feeling she'd gone as far as she could with the character, Edith Bunker died of a stroke. Stapleton went on to other projects, including a 1986 Broadway revival of Arsenic and Old Lace. She joined me on today to talk about the play and her fellow cast members. But what about Edith? Why did you drop the name Edith from your playbill? Oh, it's you in have there, a, isn't it? No, it is not. Well, it says I was in All it in the Family. It says you were a starring role in All in yeah, the Family. Yeah, well, everybody knows and it three was Emmys, Edith. and we know all about that. Yes. What is your relationship today with Edith? Oh, of gra gratitude. And uh, because I wouldn't be starring on Broadway <laughs> if it weren't for Edith. No, you, you know? don't really. You think so? Do you think that's true? I think that's very true, and it was eight and a half years of the most wonderful learning experience and rewarding experience of my career. It was just uh, delightful. It was seven years ago, however, and Edith is dead, and I guess I didn't put her name in because everybody knows it, and also, uh, you know, children want to be called by their own names. It's so a question of identity. <laughs> yes. Children do want to be called by their own names, but that never stopped Archie Bunker from calling his son-in-law Meathead. 
He was Mike Stivic, but you know him as Rob Reiner. Absolutely. We'll and hear from him when time and again uh, continues. You know, racists and bigots are human beings too.